Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We're here with the weekend edition of the show. So no matter what day of the week you are listening, I appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in. Of course, these weekend edition shows go live on Saturdays and Sundays. And these are basically the end cap of the week of the Cabral concept. We call them our Cabral house calls. They are where I answer our community's questions every Saturday and Sunday. We get to about five or six questions per day. It really just depends on the length of the question and the length of the answer, of course, that I give. Uh, but I'm always excited to be able to see what's what's coming down the pipe in terms of these questions. I don't prep for them in any way. I don't even look at them. I'm actually just opening up the document right now. And I feel that that's always best because what I like to do is, is give you an honest answer uh, based on my experience and based on all the books that I've read, all the knowledge that I've, I've been able and fortunate enough to accumulate through reading, study, research, and, and uh, working all over the world as well. But also, you know, what I've seen in the industry too, like there's so many brilliant people in the industry and, and I'm simply trying to play my part as well. So you know what? Let's dive into the show. Let's get to your questions. That is why we're here after all. All right, so Alicia is up next, or up first. Hi, Dr. Well, I listen to your podcast daily, and I learn from you so much. I keep working on improving my health and see results. I'm going to put an infrared sauna in my house in a couple months. It will be placed next to my office room, and I want to ask you if there's anything I could do or purchase to block EMFs from the sauna. Would Soma Vedic be helpful, or maybe there are other things I'm not aware of? Thank you for all you do. You're such a big help and inspiration in my health rebuilding journey. Thank you, Alicia. I, I Appreciate that. I really do. It means a lot. So um, if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash, I think it's Therisage, um, you can check that out. Or if, why don't, you know what the easiest thing to do is stephencabral.com forward slash shop. That is uh, where the infrared sauna is that I recommend. You can just literally type in sauna in the search box. It'll show up. I use the Thera360 there. Uh, typically, we're offering some type of discount, which is nice because a lot of these companies, they're not my company, a lot of these companies give us coupon codes for our community because, we, I mean, the, because of you. That's the truth. Like, we reach... Two to three million people per month just with the podcast now, and hopefully that's growing. Um, and then the other channels as well, hundreds of thousands to if not another million or so people a month. So, you know, the goal is to share great products, share great companies with the world. So most Wednesdays of the month, they send out a product review email of all of my favorite products. They're not my products typically. They are things from other companies that I want you to be aware of. And I always reach out and I say, hey, do you have a discount code for us? And they typically do, anywhere from 10% to 20%, uh, which is really nice. If you ever can't find a discount code, just email support at stephencabral.com. And if we have one, we'll send it along. That's for sure. All right, so um, the infrared sauna that I use, the third 360, is almost no EMFs at all. However, in infrared, all infrared saunas have to have a little bit of EMFs because it is powered by electricity uh, and they are using... Uh, infrared waves. So the Soma Vedic would be helpful. You could use the small little harmony that I've talked about before. Uh, you can actually see it in my office right there. It's right beside the rain barrel effect right there. If you're watching this on video, I'm pointing to it. Uh, it's a beautiful purple little glow. Uh, that's going to do a smaller uh, circumference radius around it. But then if you use the Soma Vedic, the Vedic, it's the green one that I use in my living room, that is 100 feet. I don't believe it's 100 meters, but it may be, but 100 feet around. So, I mean, if, if that's pretty big for a house, um, so that could take care of the whole house uh, most likely. And so, yes, that would be a great thing to do if you're able to. All right. Uh, and again, all of the, we have discounts on both of those. They're both great companies. You can find them at stephencabral.com forward slash resources if you want to check out the links. But again, always feel free to email my company if you want a discount code if you can't find one from us. All right. Alicia's up next. Hi again. I also have a question about coffee enemas. What is your opinion about adding one capsule of cleaning up probiotic to my coffee right before doing coffee enema? Would that be beneficial? I haven't tried this yet, but I'm very tempted. I take probiotics often, but my last stool test showed I don't have any lactobacillus in my gut. Maybe trying to add it through coffee enema would be more effective. Thank you again. I appreciate your help so much. Okay. Yeah, great, great question. And that is why you want to run a bacteria and parasite stool test. So I don't see it. Maybe is that what you read? Yeah, you wrote, you wrote, you ran a stool test. So again, the bacteria and parasite stool test, game changer for looking for bacterial overgrowth, H. pylori, or parasites. You can find that at stephencabal.com forward slash shop. Again, you don't have to purchase. Just check these things out. Know that they exist. So 
Lactobacilli is something that we see not, you know, like, un unfortunately, we don't see it um, as populated as it should be inside of the intestines, namely the small intestine. So what I add then, the clean, uh, the clean gut probiotic, it's not a bad idea. It's not. However, uh, that, that, so it's not a bad idea. But here's what I want to share with you. It's typically not what we do. So we use the coffee enema more so to remove than replenish. Typically, you would use what's called a retention enema, which is a much smaller amount of water. And then you add whatever you want to that. So like in, our, in clinics when I was in uh, India and Sri Lanka, what we would do is a retention enema, we would use certain herbs that we wanted to absorb through the small, through the large intestine into the body, or we might use some type of uh, bacteria. We didn't use bacteria like probiotics too often. It's just not what they do in, in Ayurvedic medicine. But I want to share with you just a different perspective. So the coffee enema is to remove. Also, the lactobacilli is predominantly more in the small intestine, and a coffee enema really doesn't reach the small intestine. It only reaches about the first half or so of your large intestine, your colon, before it's uptaken by the hepatic portal, well, it's the veins and the duct that takes it to your liver. Your liver then gets to expand its bile ducts. This is why coffee enemas are so powerful. It produces more glutathione as transferase, so produce more of that powerful antioxidant detoxifier. And then all of the waste, especially from the bile, comes back into the colon, and then you excrete it in the toilet. And all this is done in, within 15 minutes. So it's very, very effective. I write about it in the rain barrel effect, um, and it can be very, very helpful. So, you know, if you're asking me, uh, no, I would not use a probiotic in this manner. So hopefully that's helpful. I always like to give you the, I know it's a long-winded answer to just say, no, I wouldn't, but I like to always tell you why. I think education is the most important. Nadine, or Nad Nad yeah, Nadine, Nadine is up next. Hi, Dr. Ball, thanks for the wealth of information you provide. I've suffered with severe gas and bloating for more than a decade. In January 2022, I did an endoscopy, which revealed I had H. pylori, about four weeks of heavy antibiotics treatment, and I did a stool test, showed the H. pylori was gone, but I still was very bloating and gassy. I then did a breath test, and I tested positive for SIBO. I did another two weeks of antibiotics, but still suffering from bloating, gas, and indigestion. I have not retested for SIBO, as of yet, my next appointment with my GI doctor is March 2023. I'm always extremely tired, lots of fatigue, brain fog, generally feel like, well, there's, <laughs> I get, you can read, just read along. Um, of note, I had, a th I had thyroid cancer. My entire thyroid was removed in 2012. What do you recommend now? Okay, bottom line is this. I don't think you need to retest the, a stool test because you already know. Uh, would I run the big five? Yes, I would run the big five. And then keep in mind, that antibiotics is often how you get SIBO in the first place. So antibiotics to get rid of SIBO is why most people eventually relapse. Because antibiotics remove the bacterial overgrowth, right, that you have in your intestines, but then it allows for what? Candida and yeast overgrowth. And it also doesn't rebalance the gut flora, which is really what you're looking for as well. So. Uh, bottom line is this, if you can run the big five, run the big five. After that, again, I, so I have to give you my disclaimer, I can't give you any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, or medical diagnosis. If it was me, I'd run the labs, then I would do the CBO protocol with the citrocytal drops, I would use the specific nutrition plan that comes along with it, then I would do the CBO finisher. Along with that, I would absolutely be doing at least the daily nutritional support and the omega-3s, that's what I would do. Now, um, we'll work on the thyroid and we'll work on the adrenals and those types of things at the same time or after, but you'd want to run the labs for those to know exactly what to do. All right, so that is what I would do. And as up next, thank you so much for all you do, Dr. Brawl. The guidance you give is truly life-changing. Thank you, Anne. Appreciate that. I have a question about some conflicting information, and I wonder if it just depends on bioindividuality. I've read not to do heavy exercise, such as running, on an empty stomach because it will spike cortisol, but also have seen that it is better to wait until, better to wait to eat until an hour after heavy workout, <clears throat> apologies, uh, for fat burning. I always start my day with a shake and I am more of a vata or pitta type. I'm currently in weight loss mode, but I also wonder if this advice changes when it goes to weight maintenance, just to do what is healthiest for my body and longevity. Thank you again. You are your truly changing so many lives. All right. Thank you, Ann. And so, yeah, it all comes down to bioindividuality. So here's the thing. And I, I've, I actually have a ton of podcasts on this. So I would check out my, um, 
pre-workout, peri-workout, post-workout shakes and nutrition based on body type. Um, and if you can't find these shows, just email in at, uh, not email, but it's cabralsupportgroup.com and just ask inside of the group. Just say, hey, what's the podcast uh, where Dr. Cabral talks about um, how to set up your pre, peri, and post-workout nutrition? Because if you're looking for fat burning, yeah, you don't, you don't do food before the workout, right? Um, if you are not looking to lose weight or, and or looking to gain muscle, you'll probably do some pre-workout or peri-workout nutrition, right? So for me, and I'm going to go into this a, a little bit later, but it, it gets deep into the science. But if you spike cortisol levels and get really stressed during your workout and you are doing it on an empty stomach, fasted, it actually lowers certain immune uh, cells. Now, that's it's really more so for those body types that lose weight, lose muscle, they're more catabolic rather than anabolic. So that's why bioindividuality is what matters the most. That's the truth. And so, um, you know, what? if I'm trying to, if someone's trying to lose weight, walking in an empty stomach in the morning, light jog on an empty stomach in the morning, that's, that's typically what we recommend and it works phenomenal. I mean, it really does because you're not spiking cortisol. You're really not. Light walk, uh, light jog, no, it's not heavy. But then later in the day is when you do your bigger workout. Now, you've had food since then. Everything is good. Cortisol is highest between 6 and 10 in the morning uh, anyway, so kind of that's what you're looking at. So, um, yes, I do it all, right? I mean, I really do, Like meaning like I would not eat before my workout if I was looking to lose some weight. And then uh, you would vary it from there, whether you're looking to gain weight or not, all right? So it's like nobody's wrong and nobody's all right if they're only giving one part of the story. So yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Let's get another question in here today. Uh, Anonymous is up. Hey, Dr. Brawl, I hope you're having a beautiful day. Well, thank you. I hope you are as well. I have a quick question for you. What is your opinion on using semaglutide for weight loss, even though I'm not a diabetic? My endocrinologist, who's also a functional medicine doctor, prescribed me... Uh, Rebel, ribel says, I don't know if that's how you pronounce that. I know what you're talking about, but I don't know if that's it. Uh, to help my weight loss and insulin resistance, I've done the fat velocity program, lost a few pounds, and would like to try something else. I'm afraid to try some aglutide, and I'm very wary of it. What is your opinion on the subject? Okay, I totally get it, and here's the thing. I'm doing a whole show just on this product because they are pushing it to everyone as it is the saving drug for all people who need to lose weight. And we have to be really careful with that. Keep in mind, general philosophy, we don't get something for nothing. Taking a pill for an ill does not solve the problem. And semaglutide is not, it's going to do that in the short term. No doubt about it. It's like a low-carb diet for four months, right? Like, yeah, you're going to lose weight, especially if you even exercise with it. But guess what? You're going to destroy your resting metabolic rate. You're just you're going to destroy your metabolism. Check out the Biggest Loser study that I gave people. Destroyed it. Lowered their the amount of calories they can eat per day by over 700 calories. That means they can no longer add food back to their diet, or they will gain even more weight. So we need to be careful with this. I'm going to do a whole podcast. I appreciate you bringing this up. Um, about two to three weeks maximum. And uh, for you, we'll, we'll say it's for you. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, yes, let's go with that. And so um, I appreciate that. We've got a few questions on this. I want to do a whole show, all right? A whole show. So my, my first inclination is just to tell you to be cautious, to be careful of these wonder drugs, right? Maybe one day there will be a wonder drug that extends lifespan and uh, improves weight loss and all of these things. Maybe. I don't know that we're there yet. I'm going to give you the pros and the cons, all right? Because there are obviously pros, but I don't want you to forget about the cons. And so I want to look at that as well, all right? I'm going to keep it at that for today, everybody. Thank you. I appreciate you. I'll be back tomorrow answering more of our community's questions. Take care. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.